So me and the dog are just out getting a few rose hips to make a rose hip and rhubarb pie, which in itself is not worth video because you've seen me collecting rose hips before and you've seen me making pies before. But on the way here, I found something, and uh, that something is worth looking at. So I'm going to finish off here and we're going to nip down into the woods and put a brew on and I'll show you what it is that I found. <laughs> the further in you go, the more overgrown the path gets because although this is a very small wood surrounded by houses, there are not many people come down here. So, me and the dog regard it as our wood. Yes, we are still on the path. This is the path. It will open out a bit further down. Right, so this will do. It's a bit dark in the wood, so you will not see too plainly, but uh, uh, when I get home I can get some shots at home. So we'll just get a brew on. First of all we've got to select a spot that's not going to uh, cause the ground to get on fire because it has been very very dry these last few weeks. In fact we've got hose pipe bands not in our area but in areas further south than us. Okay so we're set up down here. Hey, watch what you're doing. Stop it. 
flinging muck all over the place. Right then, so why the um, kettle's boiling? I'll show you what I've found. And I found it on the road. As you know, I'm partial to roadkill. Uh, I get plenty of pheasant, squirrel, rabbit, occasional hare, very, very occasional deer. So when I came across this, I thought at first it was a cat. Somebody's cat. It weighs about one and a half kilos. And I'll probably show you it better when we get home because the light is quite dark here. But there it is. And I believe it's a member of the Otter family. Right then, so I've brought the it back home. Family. And this is what I believe to be an American mink as opposed to the European mink. Now, American mink are widespread in the UK. I don't believe we have any European mink in the UK. But I don't know for sure that, uh, you know, it's not a big ferret, but uh, I'm assuming it's an American mink. And I'll just point out a few features to you. It's a good two foot, two inches long. And it weighs just over one and a half kilograms. That's over three pounds. You can see it's got white on its chin there. Uh, there's no white above its chin, but it has got white, little white, under the chest. Now to look at it, it looks black, but if you stroke the fair and look at the fair closely, it is in fact not black, it's very dark brown. Uh, back to the head end, it's got some tremendous whiskers on it and it's got some very sharp teeth on it as well. You wouldn't want to get the wrong end of them teeth. And its head is, I don't know whether you can see that very well, but it's like arrow shaped, little nose, eyes, it's got quite small eyes for the size of it. Little rounded ears close to the head. And as you can see, a very long body. Which is why I thought it was a cat at first. It's got, uh, I think this leg's broken. Right front leg's broken, right back leg's broken. Remember, it's been in a car accident. Uh its feet, I would say they are partially webbed, not fully webbed, but partially webbed. Nice little pads there. Be nice to make a print of those pads. You can see there, that's probably quite distinct pads. One, two, three, four... So it's got five toes, and it's got that bit in the middle, partially webbed, because um, uh, American mink and European mink, so mink are amphibious, they spend a bit of time in water. So it's got a very long body, shortish legs. See what the back's like. One, two, three, four, five toes. Very similar. Very similar, but I don't think there's that, there was a pad about there where my thumb is. And it's got a nice, uh, sort of, not a big tail, but a fairly sturdy tail. And so that's what I think it is. So if anybody's got any different views, I'm sure they'll tell me. American mink, that's what we're going with. Now it is a sort of invasive species, so if I'd have come across this alive and uh, had it in my possession, I, I think it would be illegal to let it go into the wild. Although I think they're so widespread in the UK now that we're a little bit past that stage. 
but uh, anyway so my concern picking up roadkill because I often come across rabbit squirrel um, pheasant uh, the odd deer the odd partridge the odd um, duck but uh, I've never come across a mink before and ordinarily these these were bred in the UK for for their meat uh, for the fair but not for the meat and there's probably good reasons why you don't eat mink meat and that's probably to do with the fact that they're carv carnivores and I, I think they may also be related to the skunk or if not related to them I think that producers stink themselves so that might taint the meat as well so probably not a good idea to eat it but if you were in a survival situation then this is going to produce a few meals worth of meat in a survival situation um, so I'll take the fare off it and I'll see see where we stand. Right, I've got the pelt off which wasn't easy especially with a roadkill animal that's been uh, sort of rolled under the wheels. Anyway the flies have found it and the wasps have found it as well so I'm fighting off the wasps here mainly. There's a wasp on it now on the, the, uh, the meat. Uh, very pungent smell so they've got um, scent glands so the dog won't touch that meat and when she did touch it it just made a uncontrollably saliva so they've got a good defense mechanism so you can see why people don't eat the meat apart from it being um, a carnivore as well so I'll clean the skin up because I didn't take it off well because of the broken bones so I'll clean it up and in the future we'll see if we can um, treat that uh, treat the skin so that it'll preserve it we may we may test a bit of the meat but uh, I've got to say this is not to be recommended Right, I've, uh, I've got the head in here, we'll change the water twice. We've got the head and neck, a bit of grass on it but that, that's not going to hurt anything. So we'll change the water twice and we'll see what it's like. On the last boil I'm just going to put a few cloves of homegrown garlic in because garlic is a good a good plant for flavouring and it's good for you. Come on out the way Jess. Come out the way. Get, get out the way. Right then so the proof is always in the pudding. And here we have it. Yeah. <laughs> so that doesn't look at all appetizing. Doesn't smell too bad. You come out the way. Just move over a bit. It 
so I'm just going to cut a bit off it uh, you can see the teeth it looks like something off the alien it's its nose on the end there so we'll cut a bit of the cheek off That's only a very tiny, very tiny amount to start off with. little bit more well considering this is not eaten um, this meat is not eaten for very good reasons if you had to survive on this I would say you'd be doing reasonably well So this is one food I would consider uh, eating in a survival situation. Now perhaps because I've changed the water and perhaps because I've put garlic with it. I don't get that taste of the oil that you could smell on the meat uh, when I was when I was skinning it. Oh, it's got some rare teeth on it. There's quite a lot of muscle on the um, on the neck. In a survival situation, I've probably said this before, but if you've got food, you should eat it because it'll keep you strong and it puts the food in a safe place where you're not going to lose it and you won't get weak so quickly. Right, let's just, uh, a test I like to do is if the dog will eat it, that's, that's a good sign. Just make sure it's not too hot. All right, that's not too hot. Will the dog eat it? Jess, you want that? You going to eat it? Yes, the dog will eat it. So, we're okay. Anyway, you don't want to overdo it when you're eating a, a, a new food. Uh, particularly a food that is recommended you don't eat. So, mink then. Mm. There is that slight. That slight um, oily aroma it's got, which is similar to fox, dog fox, but, but not exactly the same. Can you see the dog? Oh, give it then. Oh, you better get out of the way, the wasps are, the wasps have formed in on it. Anyway, there we are then. What would you eat to survive? A lot of people at this point might be saying what was all the fuss about but uh, 
if you've if you've skinned a, a male a male mink then then you'll have some idea uh, but prior to this I hadn't come across mink at all and the general rule is if the dog will eat it I'll eat it so that is what would you eat to survive and uh, I'll, I'll throw it over to you. Right, I'll catch you in the next one.